Assalamualaikum, Mera Nama Raghya He Assalamualaikum, Mera Nama Raghya He Welcome to Relation Generations Channel Aja bi relation dene wali bu The village where women tattoo their faces in Pakistan What you reckon of me? Eva Zubik in this exclusive video, I'll take you inside a remote village in Pakistan. We'll find out why the women here ink tattoos into their faces and what they think about my tattoos. We'll also see how they live and see what they say when I dress up local style. But first, we have to get there. A long drive east from the city of Karachi towards the Pakistani border with India. So I woke up this morning and I actually couldn't quite believe where I was because I hadn't expected to come here at all and I haven't been here in three years but it's honestly one of my favorite places in the entire world. So let me just quickly introduce you to someone here. This is my friend Emmanuel. Emmanuel! Hi! Where are we right now? Uh, right now we are traveling to the village where my community, Kachikoli community lives. Yes, that's right. We are right now in Sindh in Pakistan. And we've got one more very special person with us today. This is Salman. <laughs> Salman is helping me film everything on this trip. The moment you find yourself in Sindh, you start noticing subtle signs telling you that everything here revolves around farming. People ferrying around fodder and crops, surrounded by lush banana forests and mango trees. We drove for about an hour from the nearest town and with very little warning, Emmanuel suddenly stopped by an unmarked roadside telling us that this is our destination. Alright, it looks like we've just arrived in the village, so I guess let's go and meet everybody. Are you excited to see, meet the villagers? I'm so excited. Yeah. They are also excited to meet you and waiting to welcome you. <laughs> we've been trying to make this happen for three years. Yeah. Four years maybe actually. Four, uh, four years, yeah. Oh I my think. god, there's everybody, they're so beautifully dressed. <laughs> no, thank you, thank you. <laughs> They're going to do a small kind of ritual really? to welcome you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> what followed next was not a small ritual as Emmanuel promised. It was on another level. Emmanuel had arranged for his village to give me a full-on bridal welcome. This they do with the bride normally. Oh, really? So, yeah. But who's my husband? I don't see my husband here. You have to find that <laughs> on the Google. <laughs> the rice and dates symbolize prosperity and fertility. The crown symbolizes my status as a bride, I guess. Oh, there's more. Okay, wow. Women are going to sing behind. You will walk slowly. I have to walk very slowly. Okay. So Emmanuel from behind the scenes is giving me cultural instructions on what to do. Apparently, I have to walk slowly, and the ladies will be walking and singing behind me. Wedding, wedding, wedding song. It's kind of hard to dance while balancing a handful of rice in your hands and trying not to spill it. You have to throw on your backside. Oh. All of it? Yeah, all of it. Okay, oh. ready? Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Wow, this was completely surreal. Uh, my name is Emmanuel uh, and people know me by Emmanuel Gudu or Gudu Pakistani on social media and I am promoting uh, culture and heritage of Sindh, Pakistan since 2010. Sindh is the province where uh, majority of the Hindu peoples lives here with peace, with love and a big sign of interfaith harmony here. Muslims, Christians and Hindus all are living here. So he is Mr. Ramu, he is elder of this, uh, you can say, the village. So this is, this is uh, Kachikoli community and uh, we speak Gujarati language. Straight after we arrived, the ladies invited me to sit with them and watch how they cook. I deeply believe that we put our souls into our food 
and sitting around in a small community like this, there's some kind of magic there. Today's lunch, we've got a beautiful mix of local veggies. So we've got ladyfinger here. We've got some green chilies, uh, aloo, which is potatoes, uh, carrots and tomatoes, some desi lime, which means local lime, cauliflower, and that thing on the end. <laughs> super, super spicy, dangerous looking red chili peppers. I have no idea what's gonna come out of this mix, but it's looking absolutely delicious so far. And it's all vegetarian. She's been crushing that for the last 15 minutes, non-stop. The next stage of the lunch making process is of course making beautiful fresh chapati bread. And Mina here, is going to be my teacher. I don't think I've ever made chapati. I've made different kinds of bread, but this will be my first try at making chapati. Tixi? 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 What Tixi? Tixi, Shanti? What What Okay. And then go like this. So we add some flour. Too much? Ziada? Okay. Keep rolling. I've got the best teachers. Keep rolling. Say? Keep rolling. <laughs> Keep rolling. <laughs> well, my masterpiece is almost ready to go on the flame. Okay, ready? Ready? ready. Oh. <laughs> nice. Look at my imperfect little, not so round chapati gaining color. Ladyfinger goes first. Mmm, so delicious. It's really aromatic, but it's not too spicy, you know, it's not overwhelming. But it's got so much flavor and so much freshness in it. Delicious. I love this village life because uh, everything, you, you can see, you no, know, there's no any noise, no pollution. Everything is uh, like, you, you, you can live uh, close to the nat nature here. Sindh is a lush province, blessed with rich seasonal crops of mangoes, bananas, wheat and countless other fruits and vegetables. But life for the farmers who live here isn't exactly a fairy tale. The majority of the region's farmers don't actually own the land they farm on. Most of the land belongs to so-called waderas, or powerful landlords who merely give the farmers access to arable land in exchange for a part of the crops. In practice, this means that the farmers of Sindh are trapped in feudalism, an economic system invented in medieval Europe and bolstered in Sindh during British colonial rule. Feudalism essentially keeps the wealthy few in power while exploiting the poor working majority. Put simply, it's a system of oppression. With Waderas controlling all the land, farmers typically get a tiny share of the profits. In fact, in many villages, their only form of reward is just enough crops and sustenance to survive on. Bonded labor isn't uncommon. Most villages don't have access to safe drinking water, and around half of the region's children don't go to school. The feudal system keeps the farmers poor, hungry, and uneducated. Not something you'd guess from the smiles and the beauty you see when you come here as a visitor. We've got one task left for today, and that is Karvadva. Karvadva, I got it right. <laughs> Which means we're going to get the fodder for the animals for the night. This is something that the women of the village do actually twice a day. So today I'm here with Rani and Jamna to get some Karvadva. This is the dateru. 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 This is the dateru, a little hand axe that we're gonna use to cut up the fodder. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm ready to help out. <laughs> this here is a kind of um, improvised bag that you kind of put on your head and put around your waist to balance out the weight. And right here in this space. You use this space to store the fodder that you cut from the forest or from the jungle. Rani is going to teach me how to do this job like that. Okay, closer to the ground. Much harder than it looks. And you know what? The thing about this kind of job is that it's not optional. Rain or shine, 
No matter the temperature, like right now it's March, we've got 30 degrees Celsius. Imagine how hot it gets here in the summer months. It doesn't matter. You have to come out here, they have to come out here and get food for their animals. Time to compare the sizes of our bags. We spent the exact same amount of time working. In fact, I got started with the bag pretty much full, and now I've got this much, and Rani has got this much. <laughs> this choti choti. And then I saw a bike. Oh my god. I asked Emmanuel if it would be okay if I tried to ride it. So the funny thing is, I actually own a motorbike. It's a pink bike, and it's on Socotra Island in Yemen. That's where I learned to ride it. And no, I don't have a license, but I trust you won't tell the authorities. This is the best feeling ever. Hi. How are you? All good? <laughs> Whew, all right, back home. <laughs> What's next? Every evening, the whole village comes together for prayer. In Muslim-majority Pakistan, Hindus are a minority, and the reality is, they often face discrimination. To see this puja or Hindu prayer here in Sindh felt like a real privilege to me. Prayer, the kids gathered around the one TV in the village, of course, watching an Indian soap. But soon after, my wedding style welcome into the village continued with a local musician and some dancing. If you're still watching this, please don't judge me. I was just trying to fit in, okay? Just just trying to fit in. We danced and danced until the clock struck midnight. But every wedding has to come to an end eventually. Well, they, they wake up very early and they start their day from, uh, I think, uh, 6 a.m. And then they, there is no latrine, so mostly they are used to go to the, uh, in the field or into the bushes. And the uh, woman comes here uh, uh, back and then they clean the like uh, whole village and uh, take the dunk and they use the dunk for the uh, like fuel. And uh, then they prepare the tea and then like breakfast and then go to the field. It's a very difficult life than the people who are living in the city because there is no electricity. All families live together and they have uh, mud houses and uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the summer they, they uh, sleep outside of the house and in the winter they sleep inside uh, of the mud, mud house and, uh, and uh, you can see the very big ground here where you can see the animals like goats and buffaloes and these kind of things. Oh, oh my god, that's so scary. Oh. <laughs> I've had some bad experiences with buffalo, so I'd rather just avoid looking them in the eye. <laughs> I'm sure you're still wondering about those facial tattoos. The women from the Kachikoli community wear tattoos on their faces, necks and hands. I wanted to learn more about why they get them whether they like them and what they think about my tattoos.
તકલીફ નાખે <laughs> 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 તકલીફ નહી થાય Women across Asia have been getting facial tattoos for centuries, but nobody really knows why. Some say it's to make their faces more beautiful. Others say it's to ruin their beauty in order to protect the women from enemy tribes. Some theories say that it's a mark of tribal identity, others that it's a blessing or a good luck charm that you carry with you forever. Either way, tattoos have been a part of human self-expression since time immemorial. Let's see what the girls think about my ink, shall we? Oh. Look. <laughs> same same. Ah, <laughs> So Rani here has offered to dress me up real local style. I can't wait. All right? Chalo. Let's go. Let's do it. Honestly, I feel like um like a princess in these beautiful clothes. So, Rani, what do you think about me wearing this beautiful outfit? Bahut acche lag rahe. They are so happy to see you and they are very surprised that you're looking so beautiful. And also uh, nice tattoos on your neck and on your face. Yeah. I feel very special and very honored and proud to be able to wear this. So, thank you so much. for this opportunity and we are very happy to see you here and community is very happy that you are here and enjoying with them and especially today you are in our dress <laughs> thank you you know coming here to this village i just feel so serene you come here and you really feel at peace it's so quiet here so peaceful 
so distant from all the other cities of Pakistan. In fact, all the other cities of the world. But you know, in a place like this, with all of its colors, with all of its really kind people, the incredibly intricate and interesting facial tattoos, all of this stuff, I think it's very, very easy to fall into the trap of seeing this place as some kind of fairy tale. But I think that is a trap. We, we shouldn't romanticize places like this. Yes, there are so many beautiful, beautiful things about them. And yet at the same time, the people who live here every day of their lives, not like me, a passerby, but people who actually live here, they work so hard for so little. Eventually the time came to say goodbye. This never really gets easier, you know? You can, you can, yes. A single film can never tell the whole story of a person or a community. This too was just a snapshot of a beautiful culture, a complicated context, and real people living real lives somewhere in this vast world. This is new. Yeah. We never know about this uh, village before. Mm, it's not same. even the culture, mm, 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 mm. the true, people. True. So, uh, women they do their faces. Mm, and it's their culture. They yeah, it shows that it represents who they are. Mm, true, true, true. The community of uh, Karachi. Uh, there is a name. Yeah, yeah, but That's we don't it. remember. <laughs> Yeah, but it's it's unique and it's interesting. Yeah. It's good to know. It's good to know, but um, we as a Muslim cannot do yeah, tattoo. Of course, no tattoo <laughs> for Muslims. Yes. All right. And the way they welcome Eva is so interesting. I can say because yeah. it's, it's like a princess. It's yeah. Like a bride. Like a bride, and like a, when we when we go to a five star hotels, they uh -huh. give the drink. They they invite. They, they welcome. welcome you. Yes. Wow. Yes. The way they celebrate is <laughs> and show the petals. Yeah. <laughs> it's so unique. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, we if ever happy. Mm -hmm. We can see from her face, yes. she's happy with the people of the village. Mm. And look at Eva when she wearing the, the traditional coat, the, the dress, and the tattoo that they make on her yeah. face and neck. <laughs> I think that one is just the, the color. color. It's not the real tattoo, but it's not permanent tattoo. Yeah, uh, she looks like. Uh, local among, yeah among <laughs> the community yes all right guys thank you so much for your suggestion if you like this video please share it with your family members and friends don't forget to share it on your social media as well please subscribe our channel Malaysian Girl Reactions and follow our Facebook Twitter Instagram and also TikTok Malaysian Girl Reactions thank you so much till next time Assalamualaikum